Hello everyone, this is Yuris Trivia, and welcome back to another episode of our Assassin's Creed Valhalla Let's Play. So we're back in Valhalla because the game has updated in preparation for the Siege of Paris DLC. And what you see here is my completion run uh, for the mastery challenge that we kind of rage quit last time. So this one requires us to hit every single weak point on the enemy and also headshot and kill every enemy. And also we have to kill everyone and save the four target kills at the end. So right there, that guy who fell almost died to fall damage. And this is the trickiest part of this challenge because the enemy will highly likely kill themselves a lot of the time, whether it's fall damage, whether it's fire damage, or sometimes they just leap down from their platforms and kill themselves. So after trying this for a couple times, we decided the best route is actually just go aggressive, climb up, and kill these guys one by one. And if you're stuck doing these mastery challenges, I mean, I'm going to share what I figured out, but overall it's just a lot of patience, trial and error. This one isn't that bad, to be honest. Alright, now we got a bunch of people in the back, and you're just trying to, you know, snipe the weak point. Didn't like the shot. Because I wasn't sure if I can headshot him afterward. There we go. Yeah, I was pretty aggressive with all these moves. You can see all those explosive pots, you know, they make it harder. If you see a fire marksman, right, they're, they're a marksman character then like with a red character on their head, they will shoot fire arrows. Do not shoot their weak point when they have their arrow drawn. Because we'll, oh, that was close. What would happen is that they will burn themselves and they will kill themselves before you get a chance to actually um, headshot them. And then you fail the challenge because we're trying to perfect the challenge. So every single shot have to hit. So just be a little patient with... Uh, there's no loot. It's just the animation thing. Be patient with your shots and only hit him when he doesn't have an arrow. It's okay if you, they take damage. You know, that's fine. The whole idea is you don't want to kill them before the headshot and you want to hit all the weak points. Ooh. It's okay. It's pretty hard for the AI to kill you in this one. Ah, that was close. Alright, don't shoot him, even though it's tempting. You absolutely need to get him when he doesn't have the arrow drawn. There we go. Alright, and just run up. Be aggressive here. Let him do his thing. Don't knock him off and, you know, let him kill himself to fall damage. Yeah. Be aggressive. Climb up. Don't hit pots, though. You gotta watch out for those pots. And right here, especially, when you get to this fight, there's pots behind people. So you don't want to, like, the one in the back right there. You want to be really careful. And you might miss headshots like that, so you just want to run up as close as you can. And here, because of his arm, see, we, we got pretty lucky that his arm's on the, um, I mean, his left, our right. Or else it'd be pretty hard to hit the pots. Here's another fire archer. Just wait till he doesn't have an arrow in hand. And finish them. Alright. Most of the hard part's done. We killed one of the targets. Make sure you kill everyone before you complete the targets, because completing the targets will actually end the challenge. So sometimes you might leave a regular guy around. The targets all have those uh, blue marks over their head, as you can see to the right. Now they have a um, crossbowman here. Who has, I believe, two weak points on his leg. When you aim down like here, down the hallway, on the right side, at the very end of the hallway, are, uh, well, there's a little fire brazier plus some pots. So this shot particularly... If you mess it up, you could somehow, you know, sometimes catch your arrow on fire from the braziers and then light them up, which is something you don't want to do. So just watch out. He just has two weak points on both legs, one each. So you gotta nail both of them and then a pretty simple headshot. He's one of the targets, as you can see with a little marker. Alright, so two targets down. 
and the rest should be pretty easy. So right here, you're going to run into the last two targets. Make sure you save them for the end. There's a bunch of enemies on top. Alright, so just, just ignore the two targets. And finish the ones on top first. Keep dodging. See, there's one more right there. Now it's hard to get a headshot here, so just be patient. There's nowhere to run past this, but I'm just trying to get an angle. If he has to stand up, then just get a headshot afterward. Make sure it's a headshot. Alright, so at this point, you actually don't have to hit any more uh, weak points or headshots. You know, I just got into the habit, so we did it. Because we already got all the points. The target, the targets don't require any sort of special kill. As long as you kill them, it's fine. You can even melee them to death if you want. And I do realize you do have ability here where you can slow time. But I find that a bit clumsy, so I actually don't like to use that. But if you, you know, are pretty adapted to using slow time, it will obviously make things a little easier. Alright, a double shot to the head, and the goal is ours. And after, I don't know, probably seven or eight tries on this run, uh, where I didn't have to record um, commentary over it, it made the runs a lot less stressful. Uh, we got our gold, and thus completed this, um, I believe this is the wolf run for the Olden Mine hideout here. Not so bad. Okay, and then off we go to the Raven run, which is the assassination run. Uh, this one is quite tricky too, because every single assassination needs to be aerial assassination, and you must remain anonymous throughout the whole uh, run, and also kill everyone. So it does get a bit tricky. Now, at the end of this run, I realize something that makes this run a lot easier, is the fact that your arrow ability doesn't require you to have an arrow, you have the sleep arrow ability. So if you are getting stuck, definitely try to use that a bit more, because once they're asleep, they can't see you, and you can just air assassinate them after they drop to the ground asleep. There's a lot of time. But for the most part on this run, I try to just use timing, use bodies to lure people. You can't air assassinate when they're crouched looking at the body, so you have to wait till they step right up. Easy kill. And then to get the third one in this first area, you have to use a body to draw him out because he's programmed to just stay at that little corner. You want to find an opening, drop the body, go back. You want to hide a little bit because he is going to come running after he turns around. He's going to see that body. He's going to be like, oh, my guy is dead. Let's go take a look. So if you move around here, you're going to be discovered. Now, when he crouched down, you can just shoot arrow at him put him to bed and then air assassinate him like that but right now we haven't really learned that trick yet so we're just gonna time things and then when he gets up we kill him and that's how you get through the first room all right now we're going to the second room which gets a little bit trickier this is where you have to have a lot of patience because there's three guys patrolling and the patrol pattern is really strange but this one's easy. Resist the temptation to throw your axe, because it's not an area of assassination. And then we're using the body to lure someone over. Now, it's sometime possible that both of them will come back, or maybe not even this one and the other one. So you just want to adapt here. If you see only one, now we can't go up yet because he's not standing up yet and i'm worried about the other guy coming back and seeing me assassinate him you see that you see that so i can't do this here which kind of ruins my chance now he's going to start searching right and he's going to tell his buddy that someone dies he's going to search all the bushes and it's going to be awkward for us to find a kill here's where things get a little bit tricky a lot of patience is required because the good news is he's still going to walk back to his original patrol route. So he's going to have to pass us by. And hopefully the other guard is walking to the left by the time he passes by. So we can get up, get a kill, and stay hidden. Like right here. Alright, now the question is how do we get the other guy to come over here? 
Now the good thing is the bodies are pretty well placed and when he comes back on his patrol run, he should notice the body and he should just run towards us. And then we can just kill him in the exact same spot. He's going to walk to the right. There we go. He sees it. All right, once he bends down, you can get up and just wait. And that's a free kill right there. Three bodies in the same place. All right, so this room is cleared. On to the next one. Now, I was being a little hopeful that he might come over, but then I realized he's just patrolling the other room. He's never going to show. So we're just going to move. Now, we want to approach this by just hiding in the bush first. No one really looks this way, so we're fine. But you can see the guy who's closest to us, he's going to have to get killed where we jump from that brick structure on the left, right? But he's facing it. So we have to kill him on the way back, and we have to get up there right here. So when he's turned away from us, this is our chance. But the other guard is kind of... Okay, the other guy's fine. The other guy's working that other way. There is a bush to the left that you can hide. And we kind of have to hide... No, we don't. The other guy's moving forward, so we have an opening right here. Get a kill, and then we have to disappear. Before the other guy finds the body and come back. So you can either come back here, which is pretty passive, or we can actually climb back up and hide in that bush, which will actually provide you a pretty easy opening kill him. Except for in this case, he didn't even see the body. Right, he didn't even see the body right there. So that makes it a little bit trickier for us, because if he doesn't see it, then he doesn't get close, and we can't really kill him unless we make a pretty risky run on the rope there, which I think we, we are going to do, because the other guard doesn't move, which is a challenge in itself, because if he doesn't move, we can't really aerial assassinate him from where we're standing right here. There's no, there's no open to actually kill him. So we're going to have to spend quite a bit of time trying to get the other guy to move just a little bit. So we're going to try to move this body to a place where he can see it. And actually he can't see it unless we move in front of him, so we can't do that. So we have to lure the guy on the left from the next hallway by placing the body like somewhere here. So that when he comes in search, he will alert the other guard and have the other guard start moving around. But then the challenge is we have two guards moving around. So here's where I kind of made things a lot more difficult for myself. I should have just sleep arrowed the guy who's not moving. And you could just jump through the little opening on the top ledge and kill him. And we didn't have to make such a mess here as we patiently wait for the other guy to notice the body. I think he noticed right here. No, maybe not. Oh, uh, we place... No, the body's placed well, I think. I don't understand why he doesn't see it. So we're going to add another body. Maybe he's not interested in that one. Maybe that one wasn't his friend. Alright. Let's see what we can do here. Wall's too thick. Oh, he's moving this way. There we go. Come on. All right, he finally sees our body, but as you can see, the body's far away, so we can't kill him even when he sees. I'm going to have to wait till he searches and start calling the other buddy to walk around with him. And even then, it's difficult. Like, we should have just sleep arrowed him here, and we could have killed him from the ledge by walking the rope. But instead, we're going to make things a lot more difficult for us. Because I haven't realized how powerful the sleep arrow is. But on your runs... Okay, see, he, he called the other guy to move around. Now we're looking for options. There we go. Now, at this time, I was thinking... Maybe the guy walking around would notice these bodies here. And come right under me. And I can just kill him there. Except, 
he's just really stationary. I was thinking this got to be it, right? But then he just doesn't see the body, searching for those bushes by the water. And then he walks back up. And I was like, no way. And there he is. He walks right back on the ledge. And I was like, oh my god. Yeah, you can see me thinking, walking around, be like, what do I do? How do I get him to come closer? I was like, can I move the body real quick and then hide? Is that possible? See, he went with the other guard on the hallway, <gasps> but not back here. So I got real adventurous here by going here because I thought maybe he won't even come back. But he's coming back. But he brought a friend with him, so I can't jump him. And I can't really expose myself by walking out. So I just kind of stood here. Using that rock. And I was thinking, if he turns around and see me, then I am screwed. But luckily he didn't see me. And he got back in the exact same position he was before. And I was thinking, okay, how do I air assassinate this guy? Oh, he walked forward. And that's when I, you know, thought maybe I have a chance. That little ridge right there, the opening on the fence, that's where I can air assassinate him because I can't do it here, which is really, really sad. Oh, we almost got spotted here. That was really scary. Because then I would have to restart. But apparently he's like nearsighted. But I still, I don't have a chance here, so I was like, out of ideas. And I decided, you know what, I have an ability. Because I realized I can't make him do anything. And when he walked up like that, I thought, okay, maybe the ridge, right, maybe the ridge. Oh, well, actually no, first I was like, maybe a new body. Maybe a new body will make him move. Yeah, because it was really out of ideas. I thought maybe he would turn around and walk back to his old post, and then I can use this body here to lure him over. But then apparently he really likes standing in this location right now. Right, he's not moving at all. Not even turning back to his old, old place. Like a couple steps to his right. So I had enough. It's like, if he's not gonna move, I'm gonna put him to sleep. And think of something. Alright, so he's asleep, and first I thought maybe I can move him to a place that I want him to be at, and I was like, okay, I can't do that. And then I was like, let me check that ridge to see if I can jump down from that opening. And it turned out I can, so that could have been a lot easier. But this is when I realized the power of that sleep arrow, because I can set up so many easy air assassinations with that without risking exposing myself. Because if you look at this run right here, all it takes is for him to turn around. Like, he almost turned around right there. There we go. We almost got... If we jumped, we would have been in trouble. And we're down to our last three. The good news is the two inside don't turn around to check here. Which means they'll never walk out either. Because the ramp is sloped. So... After thinking about baiting them with the body, I called it off because, you know, it'll risk exposing ourselves really. It's just not worth it at this point. It's like right there, right there. Like going through my head right there was like, I'm not getting exposed now. We did all the hard work already. 
And even though she almost saw us, she didn't see the body. So she was not moving up. So that's when I thought, okay, we're just going to put them to sleep. And we're just going to air assassinate them one by one while they're sleeping. Because there's quite a bit of time during the sleep. Because right now I was still hoping they walk out. But it doesn't look like they want to. Oh, see, that was the Druk. I thought they were going to come out, but nope, she was just walking to her other post, she just doesn't see the body. This is when I thought, okay, we're just going to get a very tight angle here so they don't have a chance to really see us. And try to just snipe them a little bit, especially under the ridge on their right. There's a ridge right above them that I can air assassinate from. Couldn't get a shot, so we... Relocated. <laughs> I was trying to see if Whistle will do anything. It's too far. They can't hear it. Alright, we're gonna make our move. I was scouting out places I can do aerial assassinate. I saw to his right, right there on the ridge. That would work. So I would just shoot this one, draw the other one over, and shoot the other one too, and just air assassinate both of them from the ridge on the right. Make sure we don't hit the shield. That would be really silly. Alright, really tight on the angle. Alright, we need another one because the other guy is going there too. Perfect. And while that sleep symbol and that timer is on, we just have to make this climb, which was more awkward than I thought. I was kind of freaking out at this point too, so... Definitely making mistakes with how we should climb. Like right here. I was like, come on. Get me up there. We almost perfect this one. And there we go. And that's how you get gold for all the Odin's mine. Now I didn't show the bear one because we did it in our previous run. So we only had to show two here. And now we're going to jump back into game because there's actually a lot of new stuff with the updates. But here's our high score. Perfect, this one. And we're going to see you in Raventhorpe. Alrighty, so this is Raventhorpe during the Sigbot festival, which is the summer festival. And there's a bonfire. Eivor! You have arrived just in time! Is it Sigerbloth already? The days are long, and the nights are warm and lit with fires. And it marks the beginning of raiding season. <laughs> we still need to finish gathering offerings for the gods, so we can earn their favor. With their blessing, we will have calm waters, good winds, and much bounty. Gunner must be busy forging weapons and armor. Yes. He has to bring in an extra set of hands. Svinta has already set up her forge by the training ground. But weapons are not the only tools of war, Eivor. You must train your mind as you train your body. Eager to see what this mind training would look like. I would show you around, but I need to get my offering ready for the bonfire. Check around the settlement to see what's needed. Perhaps you can make yourself useful. Am I not already useful? Oh, be sure to say hello to Norvit. But first, take this torch and mark the beginning of the festival! Alrighty, Sigurblot Festival has started. And of course, with every festival, there's a lot of events. And we'll be doing them, not in this episode, um, it's the not typical fighting challenge, but anyway. not not fist fights. Um, and there's also a fighting challenge, and I believe a warlock challenge. So the challenges at times are actually a lot more fun than the typical ones. You can see the warlock no. challenge right there. There's flighting ones, but that's not really why I'm here back in Raventhorpe. So obviously, the launch of the Siege of Paris DLC is coming in about two weeks, and what? is basically happening with the game is we received a major update before the DLC launch and it included this festival for summer. It also included 
well, it will include more raid maps. So right now we are not done with our current raid map. They said they updated some of it. So hopefully the one where we bugged out for one of the armor piece, we can pick it up next time we do it. Uh, but they also added a lot of new stuff. Uh, there's new armors and there's a polar bear you can buy. There's a rooster skin for your raven because of course roosters and French uh, symbolisms. And they also expanded the skill tree. So now at the end of each skill tree, there's two active skills and also a new area where you can build stuff. So there's a lot of new stuff to get. For the bear, we have the head run slam. We have to basically sprint and we can knock them back with a knee slam that knocks people off. Idun's heart, draw upon the validity of the vitality of Idun passively regenerate recent health loss after a short delay. That feels pretty good. And these are just additional stat boosts. In the Raven Corner, we have one skill here, Light Fingered. Ah, auto loot pickup. I don't have to push E anymore. Okay, so that's kind of a quality of life upgrade. Thrill of War. Vikings live for the fight. Gain adrenaline as long as you remain in conflict. Ooh, passive adrenaline gain. Also very powerful. And then here on the wolf side. Survival instinct. When at less than a third of the health, hold H for partial healing. Oh, a bandage action. Okay, this is not that useful. Um, wolf Warrior. Fight with increasing fury as death draws near. Your damage increases the lower your health. Also not that useful. I tend to spam rations as much as I can, but maybe on raids. Maybe on raids that's good. Um, but yeah, so basically everyone got a little expanded tree um, to work on. A lot of stuff for us as we approach Siege of, uh, Siege of Paris. And there's also a lot of new um, Ubisoft events during this period. I don't think there's any new rewards. Oh, everyone gets free opal drops if you have the game during this period. I don't think this one is currently available. I try to get it, but it hasn't let me. But doesn't matter. We'll get it eventually, whenever it's actually dropped. Um, back to the challenges. There's also a very interesting community challenge that actually gives a new weapon, this bow right here. And all you have to do is get a headshot and we already hit the community mark so basically you just have to get a headshot and participate to earn the prize i think i already did this though um, we also have the typical weekly ones to work on um, but that's basically a good way to gain opal supplement that with daily missions and you should have enough to basically buy uh, 120 opal gear every single week and speaking of that gear let's check out this week's Gear shop. Greta. Salut. What do you have to? Today is decoration piece, and you see here this week has two armor pieces and one shield. Increase assassination damage when equipped. Not interested, actually. I'd rather save it for maybe something more interesting. We have two hundred and so because have I've been. Have you got a contract? I've been, Another day. I've been pretty good at finishing daily quests, there will be even though we haven't been recording be for the channel. I still been playing this game, um, and obviously we'll continue to do so now that we have the DLC incoming. I kind of want to check. Oh, right. Hey, also, boy. we did buy some items during this period. I took off the runes from everything just because I've been switching things in and out for the community challenge. Um, we're strong enough without it. There is an item that I did buy during this period, and it would be Solter's Sword. Solter obviously being the flame um, monster, um, but anyways, uh, makes sense his sword will increase your attack when it's ignited. So that's pretty fun as well. And speaking of all the new stuff, our plan for episodes in the next few days is that I will spend today showcasing uh, the Olden's Mine challenges that we were stuck on, which we did. So now we perfected that run. Uh, we previously did complete this one, uh, the Wing Loken Outpost. And the only one that we have to do is uh, this one right here next to London. The Lolling Gaston, the Lolling Gaston Bandit Camp Mastery Challenge. As you can see, 
I've been doing these、uh, on my spare time. I decided to just record them without commentary and then commentary over them. And we already got one of them done. I'm going to finish the other two today, and that will be combined together into an episode tomorrow. And that episode will just include this challenge as well as the follow up event of completing these three. Because I believe the lady will show us a secret after finishing these three. And she will show two more locations. And we'll have to do two more sets for the final story arc、uh, for that update, the Mastery Challenge update. But essentially, we'll finish this tomorrow. That's tomorrow's episode. And then the one after that, we'll do all the festival events, all three of these quest lines here.、Uh, play some Orlog.、Uh, this, I believe, is testing weapons. That's the fighting one. And this one. Oh, that's actually fighting the, the raid.、Uh, we'll, we'll do a raid eventually somewhere in there, but there's also another one where we have to do a flighting contest, which should be also pretty fun. So we'll do the festival after that, and then when we、uh, come back from that, we'll be doing the two other locations that will be shown to finish off the mastery, and then we'll do the raid、uh, if there's a new、uh, raid target that comes out. And then we're going to pause the series again until Siege of Paris comes live on August 12th. And we'll be jumping to Francia or France and、uh, check out the Siege of Paris. So until then, bye.